perfect on paper, when the love interest that might seem like a good one but isn't the one. A good story needs conflict, and when it comes to romantic stories, someone's feelings usually need to get hurt for that conflict to come to a head. We're now at the part where the leading lady has decided to marry the wrong guy. He's nice, but he's wrong for her, and everyone knows it. Some romances use the classic love triangle formula, where two near-equal romantic interests compete for the protagonist's affection and audiences root for one character or the other based largely on taste. Other times, a protagonist faces a clear choice between a good partner and a blatantly unfit one. Claire, go back up in the altar. No. Claire. Claire, get up on that altar right now. Stop it. But these stories, the ones that use perfect on paper people, try to find a little more nuance in romantic dilemmas. They put forth these characters who seem like they should be a good match for the romantic lead, but for some reason, they're just not the one. Just as you think she's about to make the biggest mistake of her life, the leading man barges through the door. They're the characters who get dumped, sidestepped, or even left at the altar, but they don't deserve it like other characters might. They aren't secret villains, concealing their infidelity or outright cruelty beneath an intentionally deceptive facade. So what exactly makes for a perfect on-paper love interest, and how do these qualities differ between the male and female versions of those characters? Here's our take on those perfectly nice people and why cinema keeps using them in our on-screen love stories. Your mom and I were perfect on paper, and you know how that ended. The perfect on paper guy has been a staple of romance stories, especially romantic comedies, for nearly as long as they've existed. She always hides important things in the top drawer of her dresser. <laughs> she does. The trope goes all the way back to the 30s and 40s when actor Ralph Bellamy repeatedly played men who lost out in romantic rivalries against the impossibly handsome and charming Cary Grant. So what are the telltale signs of a perfect on paper guy? Part of his appeal is that he seems like a stable, dependable provider, so you can usually tell a rom-com's protagonist is with a perfect on paper guy if he has a steady job. Michael, Ben Stiller's character in Reality Bites, works as an executive at an MTV like cable channel, which could help Lelena in her filmmaking career, even though he doesn't have her passion or artistic vision. Do you have a lawyer or something? <laughs> no. I don't have a lawyer, I don't have a dentist. I'm, you know, I make $400 a week. And Julian, the doctor played by Keanu Reeves in Something's Gotta Give, offers some stability to Erica's chaotic life as a playwright. You're Erica Berry. Yes. The playwright. Yes. What a pleasure. I'm a huge fan. These men are secure enough in their careers and their finances to give women space for their own pursuits. Relatedly, the perfect on paper guy is supportive of his girlfriend, and his support is always genuine, although it can sometimes come off as condescending or detached. You are a lone reed, standing tall waving boldly. This type of guy is devoted to the woman in his life, but he's also independent and not necessarily consumed with intense need for her. Because he trusts and supports her and because he has a job and a life that occupies him, the perfect on paper guy doesn't feel as entwined with his partner as her true romantic interest in the story. I meant what I said when I gave you that ring. I did too. I did too. It's just that when I'm, when I'm with Noah, I feel like one person, and when I'm with you, I feel like someone totally different. And of course, the final tried-and-true trait of the perfect on-paper guy is that he's just so nice. Bill Pullman's character in Sleepless in Seattle, for example, never gets mad at Meg Ryan for following the story of the lonely widower she hears on the radio. Even when the perfect on-paper guy is being broken up with, he rarely exhibits any hostility towards the protagonist. Walter, I don't deserve you. Nah, I wouldn't put it that way. But, okay. He's also rarely an entitled creep, like some other versions of the nice guy trope, and remains truly kind-hearted even when the person he loves leaves him. It's normal not to forget your first love. I love you, Allie. Much like Ralph Bellamy, some actors seem to always be playing perfect on paper guys. Bill Pullman, Greg Kinnear, James Marsden. In fact, Bill Pullman was dumped on screen by Meg Ryan, Jodie Foster, and Nicole Kidman all in the same year back in 1993. You tell me who you are, I'm gonna burn this place down. I'm a man she wanted. Actors like Tom Hanks or Ryan Gosling never seem to be cast as the other guy, perhaps because they're larger-than-life stars. Whereas guys like Bill Pullman are cast to represent reality, whether that's a good thing or something that his love interest needs to escape. I was never envious of anything that you had. Do 
until now. Here at The Take, we're big fans of so many movies and TV shows, but we're also big fans of eating fresh, affordable, home-cooked meals. And that's why we love HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. We love it because it skips the schlep to the grocery store and makes cooking at home easy, fun, and it saves money. We know you've got New Year's goals and HelloFresh is here to help you achieve them. With over 35 weekly recipes, they have the options you're looking for to help you achieve your goals. Choose calorie smart and carb smart recipes, or even customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading your proteins, or adding protein to a veggie dish. And no matter what you choose, every single recipe is packed with fresh produce sourced directly from farmers. Some of the mouthwatering HelloFresh recipes The Take is loving right now are the creamy chicken and wild rice soup with sweet kale salad, which was so perfect for a cold winter day, the mighty mushroom and black bean burgers, and the Greek chicken salad lettuce wraps. These all made such quick and delicious dinners and totally took the guesswork out of cooking at the end of a long day. Go to HelloFresh.com slash TheTake22 and use code TheTake22 for 22 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash TheTake22, code TheTake22. We can't wait to see what you whip up with America's number one meal kit. Perfect on paper women aren't always as steadfast as their male counterparts. Even if they're not being portrayed as villains, boys and their bachelor parties, it's gross. Not to mention it's pathetic. Those places are filthy. They often have secret villain undertones, implying that there's some lack of empathy that affects their compatibility with the leading man. While perfect on paper guys are so nice and supportive it almost makes them too easy and boring, perfect on paper gals don't seem like as good of a fit for the romantic hero. They can be controlling, and it often seems that a change in the leading man's life is necessary for him to fit with her. I can't stand the way he chews on pen caps, or the songs that he sings in the shower. It drives me nuts the way that he hikes up his left pant leg after he's eaten too much. Much like the perfect on paper guys, the perfect on paper woman often has a successful, steady career, but she tends to be much less laid back and less satisfied with her position. She has a motivated, goal-oriented personality. Can I get back to work now? Wow. Never pegged you for a quitter. I am not a quitter. I will do this all day." And that's painted as a bad thing. Instead of being a source of stability, her career is typically a symbol of disharmony. Sometimes her goals are more about the relationship and less about a career. For example, she's dedicated to planning the perfect wedding, but that's portrayed as frivolous or a distraction from the real task of building a real romantic partnership with the protagonist. As previously discussed in detail, you won't be singing at the wedding. <laughs> because of this, the perfect on paper woman can often seem less interesting interested in our leading man. She usually doesn't pay him or his interests enough attention and tends to treat him more like an accessory than a life partner. Tell me something, really, how do you sleep at night? Ah, I use a wonderful over-the-counter drug, Ultradorm. Sometimes it even goes one step further. She's not just disinterested, she's actively hiding something. Both perfect on paper guys and perfect on paper girls usually have pretty easy separations, but it's more common for the perfect on paper girl to be harboring a secret dissatisfaction with the relationship that she has been too scared to speak on. No. I don't want to get married. These doubts are often narratively convenient for the leading man, as they mitigate the potential cruelty of leaving a perfectly nice, perfect on paper woman. Are you kidding me? You're trying to dump me on the day of my wedding. Just to look at how conveniently Adina Menzel's and James Marsden's characters fall in love with each other at the end of Enchanted. Two perfect on paper rejects who end up together. Unfortunately for the perfect on paper woman, she's often portrayed as a bit of a vapid nag. Compare Greg Kinnear's kind and supportive character in You've Got Mail to Parker Posey's. If I ever get out of here, I'm having my eyes lasered. If I ever get out of here. Where are my Tic Tacs? Huh? What? Other times, like Anna Kendrick's character in Drinking Buddies, there's nothing inherently wrong with her. She's just not quite as unpredictable and exciting as the love interest character played by Olivia Wilde. I have an idea. Let's go swimming. Why not? It's worth noting that there are a lot more rom-coms about a woman choosing between two different men than there are rom-coms about a man choosing between two different women. In male-driven romances, it's more common for the main character to have to choose between a love interest and some other kind of life entirely, like a career move or perpetual bachelorhood that offers plenty of fun but no emotional connection. He's getting married. What? <laughs> what a... 
idiot! When a rom-com is built around a woman, it's already assumed that she's looking for a partner. She's not asking whether to get married, but who to get married to. Rom-coms are all about choices. Movies like Sliding Doors and Look Both Ways explicitly explore how characters' decisions inform the overall path of their lives, romantic and otherwise. But perfect on paper characters are also a way of exploring choice. They're a symbol for one kind of life that the protagonist could live. A safe, predictable, unexciting life. The protagonists of these movies often choose the movie-like rush of a true love connection over that stable, committed, realistic relationship. It's not gonna be easy. It's gonna be really hard. And we're gonna have to work at this every day, but I wanna do that because I want you. I want all of you forever. And while that might make for an exciting love story, it's questionable messaging. Yes, romantic relationships are hard work with anyone, but constantly rejecting perfect on paper partners for hot, unpredictable alternatives implies that long-term compatibility is tied to superficial similarities like similar attractiveness levels. Plus, this overly simplistic choice between two symbolic options pits people against each other in competitions that may not be so clearly and neatly resolved in real life. And yet, this trope, like many others, reveals something truthful. It's scary to form a long-term romantic partnership, and the perfect on-paper character represents our anxiety that those partnerships won't automatically flourish or be successful, even if they do seem to check all the boxes. We fight! You tell me when I'm being an arrogant son of a bitch, and I tell you when you're being a pain in the ass, which you are. 99% of the time. We have gut instincts that go beyond someone's paper qualities, and those feelings should give us the courage to not just do what's expected by others, but what feels right to us. If it just feels like it's gonna happen, right. we're never gonna actually do it. Right. Um, look at that. That was, look that's it. That, that's though. everything. That's the whole convo. That's also part of the fantasy of the perfect on paper character. It's reassuring to see two people who realize they're not quite right for each other before they get married or have kids or build a life together. These perfect on paper characters might get dumped at the end of the movie, but at least it happened in time to spare them some long-term heartbreak. And maybe that's part of the happy ending. We all want to find a partner we can feel certain is good, not just in general, but for us. You don't love me. Me either. You don't love me? No. But we're so right for each other. I know.